was a great overview and a really nice compliment to Bill's um, talk about the theory. Um, next up is uh, Seth Knorr, um, who again you met, and he is an associate professor in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication here at UNC Chapel Hill and a member of UNC's Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center also. Um, his work addresses health behavior theories, message design, and mass media campaigns, as well as e-health applications. Um, Dr. Knorr has been an investigator on several NIH-funded uh, studies testing health communication strategies for health promotion and disease prevention. And he is co-author of two books, uh, most recently, e-health applications, Promising Strategies for Behavior Change. I encourage you all to check that out. Um, published by Rutledge in 2012. Um, okay, Jeff. All right, I think so. You guys hear me? All right, good morning, all. Well, this is a lot of fun to be here this morning, uh, talking about one of my favorite topics. Some of my favorite people are here, so this is great. Hope everyone's having an enjoyable morning here. All right, and the slides advance. That's even better. I'm going to talk to you about efficacy and effectiveness of e-health applications, um, kind of taking a step back and looking more broadly at the field, uh, which I think will be nice. A lot of the talks today are going to focus zero, zero in on specific areas. So folks in this room are probably quite familiar with a lot of the trends in the technology area, and um, this slide uh, nicely shows what, uh, pretty much what's happened over the last couple of decades. Uh, this is the internet adoption in the U.S., uh, which is uh, well over 80% at, at this time. And many folks, uh, I'm sure many in this room will remember the dial-up days. And so, uh, as you can see, the uh, dial-up has gone down over time, and so we don't have to deal with those slow uh, loading images anymore, which many of us remember, and broadband has got, gone up, so internet access has proliferated uh, and also gotten a whole lot better. And this is the case not only in the U.S., of course, but worldwide. We see trends toward increased access uh, in all kinds of uh, countries and contexts. And cell phones are also one of the most incredible technologies in terms of reach. Uh, cell phones probably have more reach than any technology today. Um, and these are data uh, from the U.S. showing some, roughly 85% of folks being cell phone owners. Uh, smartphone uh, ownership now is about half of those folks. And worldwide, as we know, cell phones are, are one of the most uh, technologies that has sort of the greatest reach. In fact, many countries that really couldn't afford to develop the kind of phone networks we developed in the U.S. have just kind of not had to worry about that because they skipped over all that and going right to mobile phones, which require a lot less of that kind of infrastructure. And uh, another last slide here on, on this, uh, social media and social networking, uh, as we know, has gone up rapidly. And I, the, the thing I like about this slide um, is it breaks it down by age. And we, we all know that younger uh, populations are, love social media. I noticed this years ago when I would come outside my office and walk down where all the students at University of Kentucky used to sit, a lot of the undergrads would hang out and I would just see Facebook on all the computers back in the, when it was just starting and I wasn't even sure what it was. Um, but this slide shows that you shouldn't be surprised if you see your grandmother on Facebook because um, it, uh, social media use is going up among all populations, including 65 and up. So you heard it here first. I, I've, I've given you fair warning if you, if you see her on there uh, in the coming weeks if she's not on already. So one term that's been used to describe the whole emerging field of applying uh, uh, technology to health is e-health. And from uh, what we've seen in the literature, this has been probably the single term that uh, is starting to be used uh, more than any other. And so e-health has been defined as the use of emerging information and communication technology, especially the internet, to improve or enable health and health care. And given the trends I just showed you, it was only a matter of time before uh, us health folks jumped in and tried to figure out how can we use these technologies to improve health and, and reduce disease. And so the e-health field, as we've already seen this morning, uh, we have all kinds of modalities that we can use, internet, tablets, mobile phones, websites, 
We have virtual worlds. We have uh, video game technologies, which increasingly allow us to play games without even holding a controller, uh, extra games, all kinds of exciting things. Social media, uh, YouTube. I just had an article about YouTube is changing, uh, is really shaking up the media world um, in, in all kinds of ways. And so if we look across the, this broad field of e-health, we see all kinds of examples uh, of applications and programs. Everything from Text for Baby, a maternal and child health text messaging service. Essentially, it's the first uh, text messaging service that's been brought to scale in the U.S. Uh, has tens of thousands of users. Um, the Heart Truth, you may have seen this campaign in various places, one of the first campaigns that really made significant use of social media. Um, Debbie Thompson was supposed to be here this morning, as folks know, and she probably would have talked about Escape from Diab, which is this great nutrition game for, uh, for children, which has been shown to increase uh, nutrition-related behaviors, fruit and vegetable consumption, things like that, um, and all kinds of other applications. Um, we also have some nice text messaging programs that have been shown to re uh, increase smoking cessation computer-tailored programs, so we see, we've seen just all kinds of examples across different technologies and across different health behaviors. And so I, I was interested in this area for a while and did uh, a variety of different projects, uh, particularly in HIV prevention, but also some meta-analyses and things across areas. And so my colleague Nancy Harrington and I put together this book project, uh, which a book that we published last year uh, called eHealth Applications, Promising Strategies for Behavior Change. And so some of the things I'll, I'll talk about hopefully come from what are hopefully insights from, uh, from putting this edited book together, looking across mobile apps, internet-based interventions, computer child interventions, video games, and also getting into issues about dissemination and policy. Um, and so one of the things that we found, um, oh, it looks like my, my uh, slide popped over a little there at the top. Um, one of the things we found is that um, folks have been writing about and talking about all the advantages of e-health. So why e-health? Why, why is there so much, so much excitement about this field? Uh, why is there so much action going on in it? Well, it's not just because it's, you know, it's cool and we have these fun devices, but the devices offer all kinds of different functions that uh, we didn't have before in many cases. And so interactivity, uh, the ability to put out multimedia, the ability to do credible simulations, uh, automated data collection. The researchers in the room can all appreciate that. <laughs> As researchers, we, we love that. Uh, we've heard talk about uh, um, uh, using mobile phones, uh, ecological momentary assessment, and things like that, giving, giving us all kinds of new opportunities to do new research. And it's, in some ways, it's a good thing that our theories are not up to the task, because um, a lot of our theories need to be improved. We need to develop new theories. And so these technologies give us the opportunity to do that. It won't make me sad at all to see some of our theories go by the wayside and develop new and better theories. Um, I think that was a really great point uh, of Bill's this morning. Um, and so in particular, there's three of these in particular that I think are particularly exciting and that people in the field have been uh, talking about. And that is we have this thing called the internet, which can give us really broad reach as a delivery system. Um, at the same time, we can individualize content. And so in the past, we had to choose between these, right? We had to choose, oh, we'll use mass media and we can reach everyone, but the content's not going to be individualized. Or as Deb talked about, we can have these individual counselors uh, that can individualize content and do counseling, but the reach is not going to be what we'd like it to be. And so the, one of the real promise of eHealth is being able to do both of those things. In addition to that, having uh, developing programs that can give us relatively low cost in terms of delivering. And so this has been talked about as sort of a magic combination of factors that we didn't have previously, but uh, that eHealth has the promise to, to, give, to give us a combination of wide reach, individualized content, which uh, should lead to higher efficacy, and then relatively low cost delivery. So that's pretty, a pretty powerful combination. So there's several sort of big questions we can ask about this field, and we try to tackle a lot of these in this book project. So what do we know about efficacy? What do we know about what works uh, in this field? What kinds of programs and with what populations? Um, a second question is one that I find particularly interesting, which is sort of the mechanism question. So uh, when things are effective, why are they effective? Uh, and, and Deb very astutely pointed out 
uh, that we shouldn't be focusing on the technology, we should be focusing on the function and the attributes of the technology. Because uh, those are the things that are likely uh, sort of our, our mechanisms. And if we can understand the effective mechanisms, then when the technology of the day passes and we have a new technology, uh, we don't have to start from scratch. But we can say, oh, self-monitoring. We, we know that works. We know how it works. Now we can use, do it in this newer technology. And so that, from a theoretical perspective, that's really a critical and really interesting question. Uh, and then how can we disseminate what works? Um, how can we get it out there? And how can we build maintenance? of these things across individual settings and uh, policy. <laughs> so I thought I would deliver a little bit of a report card to you this morning, and it seemed that an appropriate way to do it might be with Facebook likes. So, um, so I've given three likes to uh, the computer-tailored intervention and internet-based intervention literature, which are sort of uh, computer-tailored interventions are these interventions that assess individuals and then use computer algorithms to deliver personalized uh, and Taylor's content. Uh, one of the arms in, in Deb's trial that she talked about uh, did that. Uh, and there's, there's a really massive literature at this point on those. And those were some of the earliest uh, e-health interventions. Many of the early ones, though, uh, assessed people using different modalities, but the delivery would be in a print report. Uh, and now a lot of them are delivered online. Uh, and so we kind of have a large literature in that area, a fairly large literature. We have several meta-analyses now, and we probably have the largest evidence base for that literature than, than any other literature in e-health. It doesn't mean we know everything there is to know, that's for sure, uh, but we have good evidence for uh, what works and pretty good evidence about why. Um, although, as Deb pointed out, there's still lots of exciting questions for us to explore. The second group here are text messaging interventions and, and health video games. And so, this literature is not, these literatures are not as far along, but they're emerging pretty quickly. And now we're starting to see, as I'll show you in a moment here, uh, more evidence about, uh, about these areas. Uh, and so we have a reasonable amount of evidence, but we still have some ways to go. The interesting thing is, uh, and, and this will, uh, a lot of things I'll say in this talk are going to resonate, I think, nicely with the other talks this morning, uh, social media and apps. And so you might, so you're looking at me going, Seth, what do you mean, one like? Come on. I mean, what are people talking about nowadays? Social media. <laughs> what are and, and apps. Everyone's talking about iOS 7 and all the, the new functions and new apps. Well, as Bill pointed out and Deb pointed out too, research is slow, right? Technology moves fast, research moves slow. And so we have very little evidence uh, for uh, what can social media do for us in terms of, for example, health behavior change and what can apps do for us. And so we have studies underway. We have a few, we've seen a few studies out there, but they're actually very, there's very little uh, evidence to date about uh, what those kinds of uh, technologies and the attributes of those technologies can, can do for us. Uh, we can probably learn a lot from, from, uh, from text messaging, from internet-based interventions that can inform these things. And that's where uh, the point about, let's take the principles of what we know and apply to the new technology is important, but we have this very little literature on these today, although I highly suspect that's going to be changing shortly, and I'm sure there are studies underway currently in those areas. So I'll say a few words about some of these. So computer-delivered interventions uh, were some of the earliest uh, e-health interventions. So these were uh, delivered on a computer, often sort of a local computer, so with a CD-ROM. You guys remember those? CD-ROM? <laughs> Seem kind of ancient at this point. Um, and we now have evidence across a whole range of health behaviors that these kinds of interventions, typically, which are typically interactive, can be uh, efficacious. And we've seen uh, a variety of...